Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on where you are. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope your Tuesday is going well so far, and I think it's going to get better <laughs> because of this webinar. My name is Sandy Elson, and this webinar is being brought to you by the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com and our host for today, Emerald Waterways. Our speaker for Emerald is Randy Goodrich. Randy is going to be telling us and showing us a lot about Emerald Waterways, Europe's deluxe river cruise line. Randy does travel agent training for both sister cruise lines, Scenic Cruises and Emerald Waterways, and is also a business development manager in many states for both cruise lines. As always, we really appreciate the support we get from Scenic and Emerald. Before we get started, as always, please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time during this webinar in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. At the end of Randy's presentation, we will get to as many questions as we can. So let's get right to all of this exciting information about Emerald Waterways. Welcome, Randy. Thank you, Sandy. It's a pleasure to be here. If you're ready to get started, I will uh, do so. So today we're talking about Emerald Waterways. Uh, Emerald, which has uh, you know, received quite a few awards, even though we're only in our third year of sailing on the European waterways. So we're going to focus on uh, our European product and the new ships we have coming out next year. Give you a little background on the company and some of the new itineraries and some of the special features that have uh, allowed it to get some very special awards already in its young life. So thank you all for participating. I hope this helps you understand better the value of Emerald Waterways so that you can put the right client with the right cruise line. Um, and that's uh, you know your your job to do. Uh, by understanding the products better, you can do that better. So hopefully I'll accomplish that for you today. If I can get my slide to go forward, we'll be in better shape. There we go. So to mention some of the awards. Uh, our first year in business was 2014. Cruise Critic gave us the Best New River Ship Design Award for some unique design features, that, which we will show you today. We also last year got the Best River uh, line value award for cruise credit. We've also received some other special awards uh, around the world uh, because we are a global company. We are actually owned by Scenic uh, Luxury Tours and Cruises. The Scenic is a company that uh, we're in our actually 30th year of business, founded in 1986 by Glenn Moroni uh, in Australia, uh, doing some local tours in Australia initially and expanding to be a global tour company, one of the largest luxury tour companies in the world. Our primary clientele comes from Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and now North America. So we're fairly new as far as uh, marketing uh, in the United States and Canada. Uh, we started doing that four or five years ago, but really two and a half years ago building a sales force and trying to get the word out so you understand the value of both Scenic, uh, which is a luxury five-star plus River Cruise Company, the most all-inclusive, and then Emerald Waterways, which is was developed, like I mentioned, in 2014. Uh, could be more of a four-star, deluxe, but a little more inclusive than your uh, uh, standard River Cruise companies out there. We'll go through all that today. And then Scenic announced this year the Eclipse, which, which would be their first uh, ocean-going ship, which is uh, termed the first World, the world's first uh, discovery yacht, so that would be quite unique. So those are really our three products, the Scenic Luxury River Cruises, the Emerald Waterways Deluxe River Cruises, and then the new Scenic Eclipse. Uh, we're all the same company, but we're going after different markets. <clears throat> so why Emerald Waterways? It's really all about value, about modern ships, uh, the most, uh, it's actually the newest fleet out there, we'll go through that. Uh, but your clients who are looking for uh, an enjoyable trip on the river cruises, on rivers uh, in Europe, which uh, provides them the ability to uh, get up and close and personal with these uh, beautiful cities and towns that, that are located along the rivers, uh, and uh, if they're looking for value, Emerald provides the best value, and we'll go through, through that in a minute. So. <clears throat> We include all our port transfers uh, to and from the ship uh, before and after. 
as long as on the uh, day of embarkation and disembarkation, we don't care if they buy the air for, through us or separately. We just want to know when they're arriving and when they're leaving, and we'll get them uh, to from the airport to the ship or from the ship to the airport. Gratuities are included, both on board and on shore. Anything that we are uh, providing within the cost of the cruise, whether it be on the ship or uh, on a shore excursion, something like that, uh, no tipping is required uh, while on the trip. That's all done uh, with the payment for the cruise itself. It's included. Of course, all meals are included, uh, including some highlight dinners. We have complimentary a selection of wine, beer, and soft drinks. Not just a single red or single white, but several to choose from. We also have a drink package uh, that they can purchase on board if they want to. Tea and coffee are available, of course, at all times. Uh, wonderful coffee makers uh, and a whole selection, uh, actually a tea menu, a whole selection of tea. Uh, bottled water in the rooms, of course, and uh, we include a short excursion uh, pretty much every day on the cruise. Uh, there will be some days where we have to cruise further and there is no short excursion, but for the most part, every day there is a short excursion included. But something that adds the value to the Emerald experience is that we have Emerald Plus. This is a one, perhaps two extra short excursions in a, in a week or 10 day cruise, uh, a couple more in a longer cruise. And new for 2017, we're adding a series of excursions that are more active oriented, guided hiking, biking tours, things like that. So we'll go through that a little bit later. What ships do we have? Well, as of this year, we have four ships. Uh, the Emerald Sky, the Emerald Star, we're our first two ships, the Dawn, uh, the Dawn and the Sun, oops, oops, sorry about that. Dawn and the Sun, uh, are a couple, are one year, a little over one year old. We had another ship being built this year, but uh, when it was being built in the docks, uh, it got on fire. So that was delayed. That would be the Emerald Destiny coming out next year, which would, these five ships here, the Sky, Star, Dawn, Sun, and Destiny are all 443 feet long. They're the maximum length. I'll show you more details on those, but they're all identical ships. Coming new in 2017, besides the Destiny, will be the Liberté on the Rhone River and the Radiance on the Doral. And they will be smaller ships, a little bit different design. So let's take a look at the primary ones. Uh, these are, this is the, the obviously the deck plans. And you see it's 443 feet long, which is the maximum length that you can have on the Rhine, Mine, and Danube rivers, where these guys will uh, focus their, their sailings and itineraries. Uh, they take 72, 72 suites. 20 state rooms, the smaller rooms, and they take 182 passengers. So there are some other lines out there that have ships that are the same size, take up to 200 passengers. So our cabins tend to be a little bit larger. Our smallest one, 162 square feet. I know there's some out there that are in 140 square feet. Uh, it's getting pretty small. Uh, we have a single cabin down there that's 117 square feet. You can kind of see that at the very bottom, the yellow cabins on the first deck. Uh, they are single cabins with just a single bed in there, so priced accordingly. Our standard cabins on, on these ships is 180 feet, uh, good size, whereas most of the other cruise lines will be in the 160 square feet uh, category. Uh, and our balcony suites of 210 and our owner's one-bedroom suites, uh, and you see those are kind of the maroon color on the top deck, uh, rusty maroon, I guess. Uh, 315 square feet. So good size cabins, uh, 182 guests. The deck plan you can also see here, uh, like all the other ships, the cabins, besides on the bottom deck, the cabins in the second and third deck are at the back of the ship. Uh, and the lounge uh, is on the top, the third deck there in the front, and the dining room is on the second deck in the front. What's unique uh, about this ship is the swimming pool that's in the back. So the second deck is uh, access to the swimming pool. So you can see there's no cabins in the very aft of the ships. And the swimming pool has some very unique designs. We'll go through that in a minute. The Liberté, which would be in the Rhone, is 
361 feet long versus 443. So it's a smaller ship. It takes 138 guests. Uh, so it's it's got the swimming pool in the back, so the design features are pretty much the same, just fewer cabins, smaller ship, a little bit more navigable on the Rhone River. So beautiful ships. The radiance, which will be on the Doral, uh, that is 292 feet long, so it's even a little bit less, and it will have 112 guests. It will not have a swimming pool in the back. It does have a pool up on the top deck. Uh, which uh, clients can use, of course. That's we, we term that as a serenity pool. It's not really a swimming pool. It's important to know with the radiance because it is a little bit different. The Doro is a unique river, uh, but we are building this ship. It is our ship. Uh, Scenic built their own ship this year. It's really the first ships uh, that are being built independently of uh, a group in Portugal who. Uh, owns all the other ships for the other cruise lines and whatnot. Pretty much dictates the schedule and how the ships are designed. We'd like to have our ships designed uniquely, so that's why we're doing it ourselves. And we have two Riverview suites, two owner suites. There's no uh, S-type or the grand balcony suites like you would find on our other ships. And there's no cinema on board. Remember, the pool is up above. The Radiance uh, does have that outdoor pool called the Serenity Pool. There's no single cabins on this particular ship, and there's no handicapped accessible cabins on either the Liberté or the Radiant. And there's no bikes uh, on the Doro. The Doro, there's not a lot of bike trails. It's pretty hilly. It's pretty remote. So uh, there's no, no bikes on board this. The other ships all have bikes. The uh, the motif, so to speak, of the ships themselves would be kind of contemporary. Very light, very bright. Uh, lots of windows. There were we put a window. There's a window. There's a mirror everywhere. We put a mirror. So it really uh, had a very fresh feeling. Uh, makes me kind of think of like W hotels. Kind of a younger, very uh, bright uh, and uh, active type feeling. This is the uh, the lobby area when you come into the ship. Uh, the cruise director actually would sit back in that table in the back and talk individually to anybody that wants to know more about the trip, make special arrangements, anything like that. Uh, so you can just see how bright and airy the whole, whole thing is. Our main lounge and bar is called the Horizon Bar and Lounge. Uh, it's very open. Uh, again, floor-to-ceiling windows all the way around, except in the very back. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a lovely room set up uh, in such a style as to really uh, encourage people to sit down, talk to each other, get to know each other. Again, we're a global company. We have people, uh, clients on board uh, from uh, the South Pacific, from the United Kingdom, from North America, and various other points. It's all English speaking, and uh, it's a nice opportunity for your client to take this wonderful river cruise, but also to interact with people from other parts of the world. Most of the other river cruise companies out there are primarily catering to people from North America, uh, which is not bad, but this gives you one extra dimension to be able to talk to people from England, Scotland, Australia, New Zealand, I'm from South Africa, I've met groups from other parts of the world, all speaking English, and so it's very early to, easy to converse and find out how life is in their particular part of the world. This is the terrace area. This would be the front of the ship out in the bow. It's a nice area to relax, to, to have a, a light breakfast, a light lunch. You can, in the very foreground, uh, see uh, kind of a bar that's, that's actually inside the ship. So you, you, if it's not, not that great outside, as far as weather goes, you can sit inside and have this tremendous view. Uh, or if it's nice, you can sit outside and have a light breakfast or a light lunch at the terrace. The main restaurant is the Reflection Restaurant. It takes all passengers in one seating, so it can easily uh, fit 182 people. Uh, various seating arrangements. The uh, meals are uh, at the buffet style for breakfast and lunch. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, for lunch and dinner, you do get uh, wine or beer, and it's a selection of different types of white and different types of red, so that's nice. Uh, then lunches, breakfast and lunches, 
they have everything you can think of. You can see the buffet behind the waiter there. And then for dinner, uh, you've got a la carte dinners with the choice of uh, of different entrees. I'm going to show you a menu here in just a second. Complimentary wine and beer, as I mentioned. So here's kind of a, a couple more pictures of the the cooks doing their thing, uh, the beautiful uh, serving there uh, in the restaurant. So how light and airy it is. It's lovely. Here's a sample of a typical dinner menu. So you've got three main course. You've got the starters, the soups, the entree, uh, with a little uh, sorbet in between. Uh, three different choices, typically a meat, a fish, and something vegetarian. If your client has some other needs, uh, gluten-free, something like that, then uh, we'll certainly accommodate that. We just need to know prior, and there's a form you can fill out for that. Of course, the desserts and the wines and beers. The sun deck on the very top, uh, you've got a little putting course in the back. You've got nice sitting areas. I think it's like tic-tac-toe or whatever. It's a pretty cool area, especially when the weather's real nice like this. And then we do have a full wellness and spa areas. So those people who want to have a uh, hairstyle or something like that, a massage, or they want to work out, uh, that, those facilities are all located on board. As far as the cabins themselves, um, nice picture of one of the four owner's suites here, 315 square feet. It does have a balcony. Uh, what's unique, if you've seen the scenic ships uh, in that presentation, uh, all the Emerald ships as well have the unique window uh, out of window on the balcony, which does raise and lower, so that uh, if the weather's nice and you want some fresh air and keep that open, if it starts getting bad, you can just close it, but you can still sit out there and enjoy that beautiful view. Uh, looking at Avignon there, uh, Play de Pop. So uh, in addition to the regular items, uh, this, these cabins have room service. They have complimentary laundry, which robes and slippers are in all the cabins. Mini bar uh, is stocked every day, so they do get some uh, refreshments, uh, liquor involved and included. iPad is uh, available in there. Uh, on the Liberté, there's only two of these, as well on the Radiance, and the Radiance is a little bit smaller. The Grand Balcony Suite, this would be the next category down, 207 square feet. There's eight of these on board. These do have an outdoor balcony, so I'd like you to kind of take a look at that balcony. And for the next slide, I'll show you what our primary suites are. And it's actually an indoor balcony. So an outdoor balcony does have that separate uh, door. You can see it folded back, the glass door, to the left of the balcony. So you can cut off the balcony if you want, or you can keep this open. I, quite frankly, when I'm on board, I open that up, and I keep it open the entire time, because if it gets cold out, uh, I simply can push the button and that outer glass panel will raise and, and close the balcony so you can still enjoy the view but keep the cold or the rain out or the wind. Uh, it's a wonderful system. They call it the open air system on the Emerald ships. There's also an espresso coffee machine uh, and the bathrooms are quite large on all the cabins and there's concierge service here. So, And then finally in the Liberté, it, it, uh, there's only four of these on board instead of eight. The Panorama Balcony Suite, this is the primary suite available on board. There's 48 of them, 180 square feet, so larger than the industry standard. It does have the indoor balcony, so it almost looks like a balcony and feels like a balcony, but there isn't that separate door to cut off a balcony if you want to. So, yeah, again, the window there in the middle, that's uh, the upper part, does raise and lower, so you can have the fresh air coming in. On the Liberté, uh, there's 40 of these suites, uh, slightly smaller than both the Liberté and the Radiant. The Emerald State Room. The Emerald State Room uh, are the least expensive category on board. They're down on the first level, so they don't have the big windows or anything because the water level is uh, typically around where that uh, wood, wood strip is. So uh, that's not available. And depending on the shift, there's 10 to 20 of these available. There is what's called the Riviera deck. The first deck has the same amenities as the other cabins. And uh, there are two 
uh, single cabins down here, except I believe on the Radiance, does not have the single cabins. And they're similar to this, except they're narrower. So they put a single bed in sideways, as opposed to the, this, these two twins or uh, queen size bed. You take one of those out and you put it sideways, so it still fits. It's, it's small, but it works out well, and it's priced as a single cabin. So. The bathrooms are large. The water pressure is fantastic for the showers and the very roomy. Uh, nice toiletries. You get hair dryers, you get bathrobes, slippers, etc. All that. And there's plenty of storage here as well. Um, there's different cupboards. I was amazed at how much storage there is under the sink. The storage. Also to note, it's under the beds. Uh, those beds, as soon as people check in and empty their luggage, there's plenty of room for them to put the luggage underneath the bed, so they have that much more room. They're not climbing over luggage or whatever. So good to know. So here's the swimming pool. This is a very unique feature. I never seen anything like it anywhere besides on a ship or outside of a ship. What's unique about it is, it, first, it's beautiful. It's really a, a the room kind of reminds me of a, of a uh, like a meditation room in a very nice five-star spa, uh, just serene in there. They can open up the roof like they have it here. All the windows are wide open, so it's just a beautiful setting. And the pool is quite nice, and you can do laps in it. Uh, they're not long laps, but they're reasonable, so you'll see some people do that. There is a bar over to the left. I can't quite see it. I'm just left of those chairs. Uh, there's a little bar area that's a 24-hour coffee service and then bar service uh, uh, certain times of the day and evening. And what's really unique about this particular uh, room is that you know, the, the pool is fresh water. It is heated, and it's about four feet deep. But what's unique is that if you look at the bottom of that pool, you can see that it looks like decking material. But in fact, it is decking material, and uh, it can be raised. It will be raised in the afternoon after people go to dinner. A uh, button will be pushed, and the uh, bottom of that pool will raise to the top, so it's one single deck. And now you've got a multi-purpose room. They can close the roof. They can close the curtains and all that, and they turn it into a cinema several nights a week. It's also a, there's a pub night, the different activities. If you happen to have a group of people, they could reserve that room for one night. It's just a fantastic multi-purpose room. Very unique engineering. So here's these people are actually watching the movie sitting on what was the bottom of the pool is now up to the top. So it converts quite nicely. Very unique. Emerald Plus is where we add the extra shore excursions uh, during the trip that would normally be charged by other lines. We include uh, typically one per week, something kind of special we think is, is important for the people to uh, take advantage of. So we just include it in the price, things like you know, an uh, evening at a Czech tavern, uh, glass blowing demonstrations, you can see some Hungarian dinner and dancing. Things like that, castle tours, visits to special chateaus, depending on the area. So that's very important. Those are highlighted in the brochure. The brochure itself, which is the 2017 full brochure, is out now. You should have that. If you don't, uh, you can go online uh, onto our website, emeraldwaterways.com. Uh, click on the agent portal, and then there's a section for brochures, and you can order uh, one to ten brochures. Uh, they're very nice. Each itinerary is spelled out in the brochure, and the Emerald Plus uh, items are featured, uh, highlighted, and bold. And then we have uh, some extra optional shore excursions uh, if you want. Discover more. Uh, and it also highlights the new Active, uh, Emerald Active. So, Emerald Active uh, is going to add on all, just about all itineraries. Some type of a more active hiking or biking type of excursion. You can see some samples here. You've got the bike, 22 mile bike ride from Dernstein to Melk, uh, and then some others. Let's just keep one second here. Sorry about that. I had to close the door there. There's some people doing some work. Um, so that's it. that's brand new. That's just just announced, but it is highlighted in the brochure itself. 
here's the itineraries that we have, uh, the pretty typical, uh, primarily focused on the Rhine, Mine, and the Danube with our bigger ships. So you've got the most popular Danube delights between Nuremberg and Budapest. You've got the, the Rhine River between Amsterdam and Basel. You've got a kind of a different itinerary, the Danube Explorer, only Passau, uh, which is a shorter distance but includes a little bit more going to Budapest. You've got the uh, trip in the springtime, late April, early May, that focuses on Netherlands and Belgium, uh, the highlight being the Kukunov Gardens, the beautiful tulips, thousands, 30,000, whatever, tulips. This is fantastic. I saw that last year. You have the uh, a new itinerary that's unique from Trier and the Moselle River to Nuremberg. That's an interesting trip. Um, also, the southern uh, Danube, 10 days Budapest to Bucharest. Of course, these go in reverse as well. And then uh, adding Prague, which is always highly recommended for people doing the Danube River to add Prague. Uh, it's not far, but it's not on the river. Uh, the package is a three night package in Prague. Looks nice as you buy it. It includes all the transfers, uh, both from the airport in Prague to the hotel. It includes some tours in Prague, and then it includes the transfer to the ship. So it can be done before pre or post. And then there's the Splendors of Europe, which is highly popular, the two-week trip all the way from Amsterdam to Budapest. So you're covering three rivers, a couple of uh, canal systems, the, mine, the Rhine to the Mine and the Rhine to the Danube uh, canals, and 68 locks uh, because you're basically going over uh, the center part of Europe, uh, continental divide. So you're taking locks up the Mine River, and then you're taking locks down to get into the Danube River. So it's quite an interesting experience for people, quite popular. Then a 17-day trip, a few more days, they can go from Bucharest up to Nuremberg, so the southern and the northern Danube. New for 2017 was our southern France, eight days, Lyon to Arles, and the Doro, which is the eight-day round trip out of Porto. And then we have some combination uh, cruise trips where people have more time. You can combine the Rhine with the Rhone, or you can combine the Doral and the Rhone. So that's very interesting itineraries. We handle the transfers in between, so it makes it very seamless for your client. Here's a little bit more detail on the Rhone. Uh, so as you may know, obviously the Rhone is uh, south of Paris. So you know, what typically happens is people are flying to Paris, they can take the train to Boyne and then go to Chalon uh, on the Saone River. And then at Lyon, you'll get into the Rhone River. This is a tremendous trip, a uh, lot of Roman history as well as French history along this way. Also, for your clients that like wine, it's just a real nice variety of wine because you've got uh, down in Nice in the Provence area where Arles and Avignon are, you've got the beautiful rosé wines of southern France. Avignon, you've got the Chateau Nostre de Pop, which is one of the most famous uh, blends uh, created uh, for the popes back in the 1300s. And then you get into the Rhone River Valley and uh, all the Rhone wines. And then up, when you get up past Lyon, you've got Burgundy, you've got Boucherlet. It's just a really nice uh, assortment of, and variety of different types of wine, as well as tremendous history. Uh, lots of very interesting excursions included. You can also take the three nights extension. So you take uh, three nights in Paris, uh, for example, and uh, then you take the T TGV train down to Boyne and then uh, transfer by bus over to the ship. Or three nights in Nice, where at the beginning or end of the trip, you spend some time in Nice, beautiful place in the French Riviera, and then uh, bus transfer up to the ship. The Doro, uh, again, it's round trip out of Porto. This is an eight-day trip, uh, very unique uh, itineraries. Again, uh, Scenic and, uh, Cruises is, has built their own ship, and they're building their own ship for Emerald uh, for this uh, new sailing. And it's going to be a little bit unique, but we also include Sol Salamanca, Spain, as an all-day excursion. At, uh, halfway through the trip. So a lot of wine here as well, port wines, but also good red wines, a lot of history about the, the history of Portugal, uh, things like that. So it's, it's a beautiful trip. And of course, the weather is quite nice there.
You can have some extensions either to Madrid or Lisbon. And then these combination cruises where you take the Rhine, so your customer can start in Amsterdam, go all the way uh, to uh, Basel, Switzerland, then we'll transfer them over to Lyon and they can get on the ship and end up in Nice or vice versa. Very neat. Do the same thing with the Doral and do the Doral and then go fly over to Lyon uh, and do that. Let's talk about how you book uh, Emerald and uh, about our specialist program and a few other tools. It's, uh, the website is emeraldwaterways.com. Uh, when you get to the main site, uh, there's lots of great information. There's also a link to specials. So when you want to look at, uh, they call it offers here. Uh, you can click and look at offers and see what the most recent is. They're, they're updated quite often. And uh, but if you want to click on the upper left, it would be agent portal. Click on that because this is our agent area. There's no username password required to get into this area at this time, um, except when you get into Express Book. That is our booking engine. Uh, you will need a username and password. There's a registration uh, program so you can get registered, or if your travel agency uh, or host agency is registered, you can register under their master account. Um, but it, that, as far as express books, uh, having been in the industry a long time, used a lot of different booking engines. Uh, I can tell you this is one of the easiest and, and also most valuable ones I've ever used because you can, uh, within, once you get, uh, after the first time you try it, uh, you will know the system real quite well. It's not difficult. You can be in there and talk to your client about live availability within a minute. And you're looking at the deck plan, you're looking at the cabins that are available. So it makes it very easy for you to get a client that contacts you about taking a river cruise and start talking to them about exactly which itineraries and which cabins are available. Uh, you can then create a quote, or you can actually go proceed to book. If you book it, they have two days, 48 hours, uh, to make the $500 per person deposit. The final, final payment will be due 90 days prior to departure. Uh, and so that's the booking engine. It's a great little system. It keeps track of all your bookings in there. If you book a group, the group will be set up within the booking engine so that when you go to book, it's going to ask you if you're booking into your group or is this an individual booking. If it's into the group, then it takes you right to that sailing and you can select which cabin you want, etc. So also here, there's the brochure area, but also on here is the Emerald Specialist Program. Uh, I encourage you to take that before you make your first booking because it will provide you with a bonus uh, on that first booking. There's also uh, the sales uh, support network, your BDM. I'll show you that list in a minute, but it's also listed here on the website. Also, a group program. Groups uh, take five cabins typically to make a group. Uh, your ninth passenger would be your tour conductor credit. Um, it's, it's a great program that uses some type of a discount for the group as well. Great opportunity for you to make more money with the group, uh, especially if you get the TC. Uh, but five cabins is not very much. Uh, typically, if you talk to somebody, especially if there's like two or three couples to say they want to take a cruise together, uh, if you talk to them about it and explain to them that the benefits of going together as a group, that there's certain savings and whatnot, then uh, very likely that they will have a couple more people than they want to go on that trip. I encourage you to do that. This is our uh, full release offer that's standard for this year. I think it goes till September officially, September 2nd. Uh, it's an airfare credit uh, of some type, low airfare, $495 in certain cities, $995 uh, on longer trips. Uh, we did this year a uh, unique, it's different. Uh, from what we've done in the past is our airfares are going to be graduated based on the region in the United States they're flying out of. We need to pay attention to that. That's spelled out in the brochure. And that's the presentation. Hold on a second here. Looks like my slide that I wanted to show you. Hang on. There it is. Not sure why it didn't come up before, but so I'll just leave that up. 
and let's see if I get that to show. Yeah, there you go. So the better. So these are our current. Uh, it's all our contact information for Emerald Waterways. It is uh, the different BDNs throughout the country. Uh, she needs in the Northeast and also covers down to Virginia, uh, Southeast, and our National Account Manager Richard Hickey. Uh, and then we have Mark Jeanette in the Southwest, basically Southern California, Arizona, and Bad uh, Las Vegas area. Midwest, Tom Dorn. Uh, Carol Zacaris is uh, in Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Louisiana, Arkansas, that area. And then I kind of cover whatever's left over uh, in my spare time. So, and in groups is Teresa Mullen. If you happen to be visiting from Canada, uh, we have separate contacts, separate sales force up there. You need to go through them. Uh, they kind of have their own deals up there, so um, you, need to, you need to do that. But with that, uh, Sandy, I'm more ready to answer some questions. Okay, great. Thank you. That was fantastic, uh, as always. We do have several questions. One of our agents wants to know if there are included shore excursions at every port stop or just some of them. No, it's every port stop. I mean, there may be a day uh, here and there, but I, I can't even quite honestly think of any, but they say in their marketing almost every, but there, so there might be something where we, we're doing an all-day sale. I can't think of when that is. So if we're in port, there's a, there is going to be an excursion. Okay. Uh, for your Doro River Cruise, you mentioned that there are um, pre-cruise options in Lisbon. Does Emerald have pre- and post-cruise options for all of your cruises? We do for most of them. And... Uh, Typically, it's a night here or a night there, but the more extensive ones like Prague, Madrid, Lisbon are actually like three nights, including tours, transfers, all that stuff. So they're quite nice for people in Paris. We have that as well. Okay, great. One of our agents says she's nervous about selling river cruises because of the recent flooding on the Seine. Are there certain times of year the rivers are more susceptible to floods or drought? And does um, Emerald have a policy about that? Well, thank you for bringing that up. That's, I just got this slide presentation yesterday, by the way. <laughs> so it's some of it's the same, but there are a few new things in there. And that uh, we do have a new policy, which is uh, uh, called the Emerald Guarantee, Cruise Guarantee. And what that will do is uh, if, if the, I, I don't know all the specifics, we're still getting information, it's brand new for 2017, it does not, does not apply this year, but uh, if there is a major disruption to the cruise due to high or low water, uh, sometimes there can be issues with locks that uh, something mechanically goes wrong and alters the trip because we can't get through the lock. Uh, or there could be something with the ship mechanically. We haven't had that, but you never know. Knock on wood. Uh, so anyway, if based on certain criteria, if the trip really gets disrupted, um, we will not give them a credit for, towards a future cruise. We'll just give them their money back. So that's something very unique and different. Uh, but just so you know, uh, Emerald and Scenic, our sister company, we both go to the nth degree. Uh, to make sure there is no disruption. I mean, we'll watch that stuff. I get emails every day on uh, the situation in the different rivers. We've had issues uh, this last couple weeks on the Seine, for example. The water levels are high. They had a, a very strong snowpack in the Alps, uh, plus they're getting some rain in Europe. Uh, that's an issue on the Seine. When the water's too high, you can't get under some of the bridges. Uh, so all we're doing is taking people instead of leaving, on the, on the Seine cruise uh, out of downtown Paris, uh, they just are bus outside of Paris past that one bridge they can't get under. Um, on the on the Danube, there are issues as well because there's been heavy rains you may have read about in in Germany this year, uh, and they are have not canceled any cruises yet. They've been able to to work around that. If they get to a situation where it's quite difficult. Uh, with Emerald or Scenic, they will do a, a short, uh, ship swap, say that five times fast. Um, and because the ships are identical and one's coming up the river, one's coming down, we'll just move people around and that's a little disruption 
as possible. So uh, we try to make it work, and again, we very seldom cancel a cruise. That's excellent, and that is a very unique guarantee that uh, Emerald's coming up with. Uh, is there Wi-Fi included for everybody, and is it available all over the ship? Uh, yes, uh, it's available for everybody. It's in the cabins and uh, all throughout the ship. The best Wi-Fi, in case you have a client that's really uh, uh, that's really really important to them, I found the best is actually back by the pool area. I don't know why that is. Uh, but uh, that's where I did a lot of my work and stuff. I just sat back there. It's a very, very calm, serene area. So uh, just FYI, but it is available throughout the ship. Okay, excellent. I think uh, that may be because of where the router is located, because I found that to be true as well. <laughs> it could well. be, or the, the roof <laughs> open or something. Yeah, you know. yeah, something. Um, one of our agents wants to know, other than the open bar, what would you say are the two main differences between Scenic and Emerald? Oh uh, well, uh, I don't. I don't want to be competing against our other brand, but there. Uh, I mean, Scenic is there to be the luxury all inclusive. Think of Regent Cruise Lines, okay? And so Regent is for your customer that they don't. They're not even that concerned about the cost. Uh, they just want to be able to go and have everything included, and not worry about what anything costs while they're on their trip. Just focus and have a good time. And they have butler service, uh, all the liquors included, all this multiple. They have multiple shore excursions. So there's choices. It's really about choices. You have a choice of things to do. You have a choice choice of places to eat, and uh, that's that's scenic. So that's for that kind of clientele. Emerald is for your client that really doesn't want to pay uh, everything up front because maybe they don't drink. They don't want to pay for that. Maybe they don't care about having multiple shore excursions. Uh, exclusive events. They don't care about butler service. Uh, they just want to have a good value, and they want to, they're going to see the same things. Uh, so Emerald is the best value for that area, uh, that type of client. Um, so those, those are really the primary the differences and why we came out with Emerald Waterways a couple of years ago. It's really be competitive from a price standpoint. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of I kind of can I kind of compare the two. You've got Region on one side with Scenic. You've kind of got an Oceana product. It's our first class. Beautiful ship, great service, but it's just not all inclusive. Right. Uh, we don't think of it as Emerald uh, in competition with Scenic. We just want more information so we know what the best and most appropriate product for our clients is. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then you answered that, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we have somebody asking about the um, the bikes on board. Uh, if the demographic is um, First of all, what is the demographic uh, for Emerald? And if it's if it's skewing towards an older passenger, um, the active uh, bike tours are they more of uh, you know a, a gentle uh, bike tour or something a little more strenuous? Well, it's it's a that's a, a choice. Uh, so there's different tours each day, and uh, there's going to be a general tour, which is uh, going to be uh, cater to all types of levels, but some days we're going to have that option to take a longer bike trip or hike a mountain or whatever. Uh, that's not something they have to do. That's a choice. They can choose to do that or they choose to do something else. Uh, you mentioned the square footage of the staterooms. Did that square footage include the balcony area for the outside balcony cabins? Yes, it does. Because the balcony actually, uh, like I said, when I'm on board, I just open the balcony up. I never close it uh, if I'm lucky enough to get a balcony cabin. Uh, <laughs> but but it's uh, it just becomes part of the room, so yeah, it's all included. Okay. And can you give us some more details about the drink package that's available? Um, I don't have that right in front of me. I have looked at it. As somebody who's been known to have a cocktail or two, I thought it was pretty reasonable. Uh, it's something they can buy. It's actually there's actually several different price packages. It's just uh, uh, I guess wine and beer anytime they want it. Besides just lunch and dinner package, there's a liquor package if they want liquor, and then there's like a, a champagne package or something like that as well. 
so I don't have all that information right in front of me, but it, it's very fair and reservations uh, can give you more information on that. Okay. I'd be happy to send it to you. Okay, excellent. And um, we have a couple of more questions, but this is a good time to mention to our agents that uh, if we don't get to your question or if you think of something after the webinar, uh, Randy has all the BDM information up on the screen right now, so make a note of uh, who your BDM is and um, or, or the, uh, the group person, Teresa Mullen, and um, uh, be sure to ask your questions uh, after the webinar is over. Uh, one of our clients, want, I mean, one of our agents wants to know if somebody is getting off the ship and not going on a ship's excursion, uh, or I guess even if they are, does the ship provide uh, box lunches for them to take? Uh, I'm sure that can be arranged. Uh, I know it. Yeah, yeah, they can. I'm, I'm sure that happens. I haven't been asked that question before. So, uh -huh. the question. I don't see anything they do uh, because they have, we have the River Cafe kind of a deli, and it's really easy for them to do that. But I'm sure that uh, something can be done on them as well. And are our passengers allowed to bring their own booze on board the ships? Um, it's not encouraged, but it's not going to be. There's nothing. I don't think anything's been said about it. Uh, it's not encouraged. Uh, obviously, we're not in the business to make money off of selling liquor. You know, it's there to be there because people want it. Okay, and our last question is, do you have special travel agent rates available or FAMs available so our agents can experience this product? Yes, we do. And it's actually a very, very fair program. Uh, charge $495 for a one-week cruise uh, for an agent, $995 for a companion. That's the kind of the, the lowest price. Uh, it goes up the longer the trip or if you're uh, depending on the availability on, the, on that particular sailing. Uh, the best thing to do is uh, get into our uh, express book reservation area or call reservations and find an itinerary that's got a reasonable amount of cabins left unsold and you have a better chance. What you do is go ahead and book what you want and then contact your BDM requesting uh, us to consider an agent rate for that and we will take that to inventory control and if we get it approved then they will adjust the pricing. Uh, we can't guarantee it. Uh, it's all controlled by uh, the inventory people but uh, that's how you do it. And about how far in advance are agents likely to be confirmed on a cruise that has space. Oh, you'll be confirmed right away, uh, one way or the other, because the, the deposit for the cruise is due in, in 48 hours. So uh, we know that you don't want to pay that if you're not going to get the lower rate. So they'll get, they'll get back to you pretty much immediately. Fantastic. Randy, as always, this has been a fantastic presentation. I think we can all uh, identify people in our database who would be appropriate for Emerald. And uh, uh, it looks like just a, a really fabulous uh, product. So thank you so much. Our guest today has been Randy Goodrich from Emerald Waterways. Randy is a travel agent trainer and business development manager. Randy, as always, this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandy, and thank you, everybody, for taking the time to participate and learn some more about Emerald Water Race. And I will add my thanks to our agents who are on this call for taking time out of your day to be with us today. I know you learned a lot, as did I. So thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.